the mystery of the past draws us to the art of Egypt. Great works of art buried for centuries reveal an ancient civilization of gods, pharaohs, and elegant people who prospered along the banks of the Nile. Flowing from the heart of Africa to the Mediterranean Sea, the Nile's annual floods fertilized the river valley and allowed commerce and culture to thrive. The ebb and flow of the river, the rising and setting of the sun, the daily opening and closing of the lotus flower are reflected in the Egyptian worldview, in their belief in life after death. The pyramids and surrounding cemeteries were built to ensure eternal life, allowing the rulers, nobles, and priests buried there to participate in the cosmic cycles of creation. Tombs and temples built of stone survive even today in the desert sands, preserving these documents of Egyptian culture and beliefs. Surrounded by these fascinating objects, we are still searching for ancient Egypt. For over a hundred years, scholars in the Egyptian section of the University of Pennsylvania's museum have led excavations as part of the search to understand life in Egypt four to five thousand years ago. Field excavation brought most of the artifacts in this exhibition to light. The archaeological process involves locating the sites, excavating, and careful handling of the fragile objects. These objects reveal their secrets slowly and require the expertise of a varied group of scholars, including archaeologists, art historians, and experts in linguistics. While working in the field, epigraphers record decorations and inscriptions. Then Egyptologists translate the texts. Scholars like David Silverman, curator of this exhibition, also analyze the scenes. Look at this panel under different lighting conditions. Both natural and artificial light can distort images in relief on carved stone. Therefore, photography can't replace the painstaking process of epigraphy. Hieroglyphs record names, titles, dates, formal declarations, and ordinary remarks. Like the words in a cartoon strip, these hieroglyphs from the tomb chapel of the nobleman Kaipara tell us what the butcher says to his assistant. Hold the leg of the animal, orders the butcher. I will do as you wish, replies the assistant. The university archives contain a hundred years of excavation records. Scholars continue to consult these documents to help uncover the meaning behind a work of art. 10th of June, 1916, Saturday. Today was one of our banner days. Ganawi found a pocket in the north edge of his trench, which contained a quantity of gold and faience jewelry. The main piece was a figurine of Sekhmet in solid gold, 72 millimeters long. This small figure, like every object in the exhibition, tells us about life, art, and religion in ancient Egypt. The goddess Sekhmet represents the fierce strength of a lioness, has the ability to cause and cure pestilence, and bestows protection. The sun disk and cobra on her head associate her with the brilliance and power of the sun god. The Egyptian religion had a pantheon of gods, many associated with nature and specific animals along the Nile River. The goddess Hathor, often seen with the head of a cow, has maternal characteristics, but could bring ruin to enemies. Bastet, the cat goddess of fertility, was believed to protect people and help them with problems. This wonderful bronze sculpture of a cat may have contained a votive mummy offered to Bastet. Nefertim, the lotus god, symbolizes regeneration and wears a lotus blossom as a crown. Many different deities took the form of snakes, some associated with protection, others with fertility. These are the gods of a farming people who lived in a fertile land of eternal sunshine and little rain, and grew rich on the abundant crops and animal herds of the river valley. 
The towering cliffs along the Nile provided a majestic setting for the Egyptians to build monumental tombs and temples to honor their gods, as well as their pharaohs, whom they believed to be incarnations of the sun god Horus. Both ordinary people and royalty had their bodies mummified as part of the ritual enabling them to live forever. The image of the deceased was also an important part of the ritual, serving as a substitute for the mummy in case it was harmed in any way. Many striking portraits of the ancient Egyptians have survived thousands of years and still speak to us today. With these images, Egyptians buried a variety of objects used in their daily lives to provide the deceased with comforts and personally cherished items for their afterlife. Made of black and blue faience beads, this broad-colored necklace anchored with falcon-headed end pieces would have added a bright splash of color against a man or woman's plain linen garment. Tomb chapels were often built above the subterranean chamber, housing the deceased and his funerary goods. This is the chapel of the nobleman Kaipura, which was built for him more than 4,000 years ago. A false door in the chapel wall represents the link between the world of the living and the dead. Egyptians believed that the life force of the deceased could pass through the false door to partake of real offerings as well as an eternal supply of food and wine brought by servants painted on the walls. This beautifully shaped and painted wine jar held such an offering to nourish the deceased. The ancient Nubians, neighbors of the Egyptians, shared many of their religious beliefs and also made funerary art. Jay Gates, director of the Dallas Museum of Art, and curator Anne Bromberg examined this Nubian Ba statue with a human portrait head and the body and wings of a bird. It represents that element of the deceased that could move between the earthly realm and the divine realm. This figure had a form unique to the Nubians. It was once brightly painted and set outside of a pyramid marking a royal tomb. Our search for Egypt continues today in museums and universities, keeping this ancient culture alive. Hard stone and glowing color express the Egyptian perception of immortality and give us a glimpse into a world as sunlit as the land of the Nile itself.